Okay, so I finally managed to get the original Xbox emulator running on Raspberry Pi 5. It's far from perfect, but I thought I'd show the progress I've made. And I'll also show how to get to this point. Because I think the more people that try it, maybe they'll find different things that can improve performance. So let's first of all just show it running. This launches it. You can see it's looking for an image. The startup is definitely better than it was now. And a lot of the time the sound is absolutely fine, but just the frame rate is pretty low. Uh, now if we drag this over to the side, uh, you'll see that it says V3D 7.1 not supported by this version of Misa. So we aren't getting proper 3D support, which I think is the problem, uh, or part of the problem. I mean, the Pi 5 may not be powerful enough, but I think it might be for some games, some lower end Xbox games, I think probably will start to run all right. So let's just load a disc in. So I need to mount my USB stick because I've got my ROMs on this USB stick. So we go back. So let's try that again. So we launch Crash Bandicoot and then we need to go to reset. And since overclocking, uh, this has definitely improved a bit, but I don't think overclocking the GPU makes any difference to this particular emulator. So the intro seems absolutely fine now. So this loading screen was incredibly slow when I was first using it. It's definitely a lot better now. Crash Bandicoot, my old nemesis. Okay. So we'll skip past all this. And I can actually control it now. And uh, I haven't got FPS up, but if I did have FPS, it would be awful. I haven't tried this level yet. And as an emulator, you don't get a lot of control. There's not a lot of uh, things you can turn off or, or sort of turn down effects or anything like that. I am running it at 640 by 480, which is the lowest resolution it will go to. And I think it probably works about the same full screen uh, as it does windowed. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do on this bit, because obviously I'm in it. Oh, okay, probably not that. Let's try and work this out. So I guess I'm going right here. Oh yeah, so I would be going right towards the apples. And can I spin? Okay, so as you can see, I mean, it, it certainly isn't particularly pleasurable to play. Uh, oh dear. So let's quit out that. Uh, by Well, let's just try and load into a different disk because the, the overall system is very stable. It is just incredibly slow. Uh, I think Dakar didn't load. And I do have an original Xbox in my loft, uh, which I had from well very early on when they came out. It's a great machine. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's working. So, and I appear to have lost sound, but that could be with KDE Plasma. Oh no, it's on here. Oh no, it is still there. You full screen. So it's stable. The system is running well. The system is running well with this big overclock, which I'll show in a minute. So this before the overclock wasn't loading very fast at all. And also lowering the resolution to, uh, with well, the desktop resolution is 720. Has definitely helped a little bit. You just grab everything you can really when you're, when you're trying to push it this far. But some people have said in the comments that the original Xbox was two and a half times the performance of the PS2. Um, so it would be harder to emulate if that's the case. Such a shame because all of this, you know, it looks like it's going to work and everything. But then you start off and by this point it would be fast. But as you can see, it's not fast. So let's quit out of that. So I'm using ARM frequency equals 3000. I don't need USB max current enabled equals one because I now have the official Pi power adapter and so I can use USB boot anyway. Uh, GPU frequency equals 1000. I did try 1200 earlier on, uh, which I did get to boot with um, an over voltage of about two or three. I don't think it improved the performance at all. So I don't think the GPU is that important at this stage because it's probably not using the 3D hardware in the way that it should be. Anyway, let's quit out of that. 
go back into terminal and just run it. What else have I got there? Jet Set Radio I tried. And I was hoping I might get a game for a previous system. Um, so uh, I've got GTA San Andreas to run on PS3 on my MacBook. And it was really because it was a PS2 port. So you can see it's attempting to do it. Bit weird on the audio on this one. So you can see it attempts to uh, move around and things like jump seems to work and stuff. But again, yeah, way too slow. But with 3D support, you never know. Uh, well, let's just do Grand Theft Auto. Let's just see if I can get it to run. Yeah, all the menus and everything were good on this. Should we go full screen for this bit? I love the start of this. Let's just skip through, Xbox version. Uh, I think we've lost it. Anyway, let's show you how I got to this point. And uh, I thought I'd document it anyway so that I remember how to do it when the graphics drivers are updated. Uh, so I'm going to shut this down. I'm just going to switch it off. So I'm currently running Raspberry Pi OS on this SSD. I'm going to write the operating system to this one. So let's pop that in. And I'm going to write Raspberry Pi OS with KDE Plasma, which is the one I featured in my video recently. So let's launch Imager. But this version does work on USB. Uh, I couldn't get it to work on USB, the other one. It would only work with an SD card. So use custom. So this is the USB image. But you can use Raspberry Pi OS for this, just the same. And then I'm writing it to the drive and hit write and yes. And come back when that's all done. Okay, so let's shut down and reboot from that newly written SSD. And I've got various different things on my USB stick that I'm going to need. Uh, so in here, if I go to my Xbox folder, there's three Xbox files here. These are very crucial and I'll show them a bit later on. First of all, we need to copy this text document and pop it in. Uh, let's go into my documents folder. And let's open that up. First of all, sudo install flatpak. And we'll open up a terminal and paste that in. And yes. And while it's doing that, let's copy the next bit. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can get the whole line. And then just drag that over to one side. Let's pop this over this side. So that bit's done. Let's paste in the second bit. And now we need to reboot. Okay, let's go back in again. And open that text document. So we need to install the emulator. back into the terminal and paste that in and this bit takes a while okay so that's all done so let's copy this to launch the emulator although it's not going to work at the moment but you do need to run it at least once so paste that in and hit return and you can see it opens up but it needs the configuration to happen uh, now we can go into folders so let's go into the file manager and I need to go to my 128 gig stick where I've got three Xbox files and I'm going to copy those and I'm going to put them in a particular location. And what we need to do is go view and show hidden files. And then that, re and then that reveals a .var folder which wasn't there before and keep clicking on it until you get to data and XMU and XMU and then we'll paste it in here and the reason it wasn't working before is because this was installed with Flatpak uh, it didn't have full access to certain files it puts certain things in a sandbox and you can't have full access to them so if you put it within the apps folder, it has got access to it. You don't need to do this with the ROMs. You just need to do this with the hard disk image, the BIOS, and one other file. So let's go back into that emulator and go to settings. 
and you can see here these are the bits that I need to select not the EEPROM because that's already done uh, by the system so MCPX so then we need to go home and again we need to right click here and show hidden files and then dot var app app, app xmu data xmu and xmu and you can see here's my folder and this is the first one mcpx 1.0 i've got a folder here with spares in which i don't really need for this but it is other uh, xbox bios files uh, and another mcpx but this combination i tried on my mac was the combination that worked best for me so the flash rom and we need to pick this one, 4627 debug. I have got some different uh, versions of this in this folder, but uh, I found that 4627 was the one that worked for me. So that's why I've got it separate because I just pick it anyway. So let's hit open. Uh, and then the hard disk, and you just click on that and hit open. And you can see they're all populated now. So MCPX 4627 and the hard disk image. This is an Xbox hard disk image, uh, so that allows it to boot. So now we can quit out of that, and uh, if we press exit, we need to mount my USB stick. You might not need to do this in Raspberry Pi Imager, but you can see here my 128 gig, because I've restarted, needs mounting. So now that's back. I can close that. Uh, let's launch the emulator again. And you can see that it's starting up with the Xbox menu. Just changed my audio because I wanted to go through my sound card. If you go to machine and load disk, you can pick whichever disk you want. And these are running from the USB stick. They work absolutely fine from the USB stick. I'm going to continue with Crash Bandicoot uh, just to show it running. But also one thing I would do is to lower the display resolution. So let's go into configure display. And we want to change that to as low as we can, really. I mean, 720 is pretty practical. You can go down to 640 by 480. You might get a little bit more. And you can see now that it should be working absolutely fine. I've got my Xbox 360 controller, which is already configured. I haven't had to do anything at all to that. And let's see how it works without me having to change to anything else. And I'll try this again when we get some more updated 3D graphics drivers on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Oh, and by the way, I'm not overclocked on this, but I was in my previous Xbox video.